Welcome back everyone to Hearthstone Masters Korea Season 2 and we're now to our next match which will be the last best of five of the day. Group D of the round of 16, it's going to be Surrender versus Transit. Yeah, Surrender, a lot of people uh, were saying was the best player in Korea at the beginning of the last season. He didn't qualify though, so we never got to find out if that was true or not. Solcio won the tournament, but Surrender is here this time qualifying. And he's going to take on Transit, uh, a player that's been very good in Korea for a long time, but always struggled once he got to the booth. He's qualified for, I believe, what, like, uh, well, all three for uh, all three of all the seasons, didn't he? There's so, one he didn't qualify for. Yeah, so four seasons total, if you yeah. include the Korea versus China, he didn't qualify. Yeah, I think three out of four he one of those, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, oh, yeah, so three, that would be it. Right. Yeah, so three total, like you said. Um, but, yeah, like like you already mentioned, Doe, he hasn't really gone too far. But let's listen to what they have to say about themselves. This is going to be Surrender from the Ku All Killers, formerly known as God Siho. Both of them. Oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, Transit, of course, now. Uh, he's no longer part of the uh, Team Godzilla and when they went over to all goes for now. He's in his own team. Uh, but for Surrender, uh, it's exciting to return to a stage at OGN uh, after about a year now uh, to play for the fans. And the Transit, yeah, you know, it, I had a really rough showing in Season 1, so I'm just really trying to redeem myself. And in season one, you know, watching my teammates do so well, uh, you know, I it didn't feel too bad because I was just so happy that they were able to do so well. And I was so happy to, in fact, give my time uh, to, you know, help them go on to the very top. And, and, you know, for Transit, he was saying, yeah, you know, well, it really motivated me to do well, uh, very well, but uh, I will, he, say, uh, he was saying that, yeah, you know, my former teammates have a tendency to kind of underestimate me, and they just try to write me off within the team uh, as a top player, but I, I want to really take this chance to prove them wrong, and Surrender was actually saying the same thing earlier in the interview, he was saying, yeah, well, you know, my teammates were all congratulating me when we saw our matches from the round of 16, so they were like, oh, okay, you'll probably just win against I know both of us went through the qualifiers, it's been kind of rough, but let's do our best to show uh, our best forms here in the round of 16. Meanwhile, Surrender just saying, well, if you really want to beat me, maybe you can try in an AOS game or something uh, somewhere else, but even then, I think I'll probably still beat you, so it's, Surrender uh, feeling pretty confident. Well, there's no doubt. There's a, This match is personal, man, I mean, because uh, Transit was on Team Godzio, and uh, when Team Godzio became the Ku All Killers, there were two players that uh, were not brought along for that, and one of them was Transit. So he's out to prove himself. Uh, he's out to prove that he deserves to be on that team with the rest of those guys. And uh, taking out Surrender, who is on the team right now, would certainly be a good way to do that. Yeah, Surrender was the leading uh, player in terms of points for the World Championship until Socio won that finals in Season 1 by getting 150 points. So Surrender now, if he wants to go ahead and get that first place. He's gonna need a win in one of these seasons to get another 150 point lead back. Otherwise, it's gonna be a grind to catch up in about a 130 point difference right now. Sitting at 170 yeah. for second place in the Korean region for Surrender. But on the other side, it's gonna be Transit. Like you said, do a lot to prove for him. He needs to redeem himself for the fans for one, because there used to be so much hype around this guy. But he hasn't really been able to show up in the booth. But now he's part of his own team, Chiji Gaming, with another one of his teammates from Team Godzio. Both, neither of them uh, continuing to join the coup all killers. If you look at the way his eyes are moving, it looks like he's plugged in the Matrix and he's learning how to pilot a helicopter or something. <laughs> Maybe he is. The program Maybe he's like, is well, being loaded. The, the Win Hearthstone program is being loaded <laughs> into Transit's brain right now. All right, well. He doesn't need it, though. He's good enough. No, I mean, he's always been a good player. I and mean, when you talk to him, he knows the game well, but he just hasn't really been able to uh, show up. And I do remember some of the conversations uh, I overheard with him and his teammates uh, last season when they were all still part of Team Godzilla. People saying, well, well, like, Transit, you don't, you don't practice as much. I mean, you know, why are you so interested in trying to practice now or something like that? And they did seem to kind of write him off as not wanting to win as much. He took a bit of a break, but as of this morning, uh, he saw my friends list I play against him, I talk to him all the time. 
And uh, as of this morning, he was 12th on the Asian server in Legendary. So the guy is uh, is certainly well, playing a lot. Yeah, he's definitely playing a lot these days. Meanwhile, Surrender bringing Hunter, Druid, and Warlock as his three decks here in the round of 16. Yep. Wow, a 19 to 9 win loss ratio for Druid. It's pretty good. That is Druid. Yeah, well, that that is a big difference from Transit's Druid, Druid game, which is a 1 yeah. 8. That's pretty rough. Warlock, Mage, and Druid for Transit. And uh, Mage, a class we haven't seen as much, but Transit has always been one of the players that has been uh, in Korea that has been more in tune with uh, the deck list coming out of North America and Europe and more willing to use those deck lists himself as well, too. So not surprising to yeah, uh, see him throw that Mage in there. He also loves Mage himself. He call, you know, his ID, he calls himself the best Mage in Asia. Yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, Surrender, his ID, when explained in full, is actually, if I get hit with board clear, I surrender. <laughs> that is what it means. So, uh, I see. well, we'll see how it goes down. Fans voting 74% in favor of Surrender. I mean, the fan vote, not too surprising, given the well, track yeah. record for these guys. He's second in WCS uh, points, right, or uh, I would say World Championship points right now, anyway. No hearts on WCS yet. <laughs> Hint in Blizzard. But, uh, yeah, a lot to shoot for for Transit to take this guy out. It's going to be tough, but he certainly does have what it takes. Yeah, well, I, I think this is going to be one of the most exciting matches we have in the round of 16, depending on which Transit shows up in the booth. Is it going to be the common collected one or the one hit by the nerves and surrender a long time coming to qualify for Masters? But here he is. Let's jump right into game number one. Hunter versus Warlock starting things off for Surrender versus Transit. And you know, I talked to Transit uh, before the match today about the nerves. And he said, you know, last match, uh, last season, it really wasn't nerves. He just said he wasn't sleeping well, said he wasn't uh, prepared, was just was tired that match and caused him to play badly. But he said he's feeling great today. He's not nervous at all. And he thinks he's going to win easily. So all right. we will see if he can. Looks like it's a uh, slower Hunter. Yeah, definitely for a surrender. much slower hunter here for surrender and uh, handlock going to be the case here for transit. He already sent back his mulligans and now he has that Sylvanas in hand. Surrender taking a little bit longer with his mulligans, wondering if he wants to uh, stick with his choices here or trade back that animal companion. It's a it's a pretty decent debate. I can see why you might want to debate that. Yeah, if you want to get a little bit of an early lead, I'd kind of be inclined to keep it, especially with the coin. If, you, if I didn't have the coin, I'd be a little bit more hesitant, but I think keeping it's just fine. All right, we'll surrender. All right, well, he gets an abusive sergeant there. Yeah. Job done. And do you, oh, we're looking at the war championship points that we talked about. Surrender is at second place with 170, but Socio with that 150 boost from winning season one of Masters here at OGN is at 300 already. Yeah. Surrender is very animated. Here. He doesn't know if this is Zoo Lock or Hand Lock as well, too. Uh, if it's Zoo, you definitely want to play the Abusive Sergeant. You want to get something out on the board to handle, like a Knife Juggler or whatever might come out on the first turn. But if it's Hand Lock, it's a little bit of a waste because that early damage isn't going to go quite as far. If they Mortal Coil it, you don't feel great. So. That's kind of the debate he's having internally right now, is what kind of warlock this really is. Wow, and look at this. The Ku Oculars have the highest win rates in Korea so far in professional matches in 2015. Surrender at 65, so 65 also in Pomla trailing right behind. Not surprising at all. Those guys are definitely the best right now. So he's going to go with the safer play, play the abusive sergeant just in case. Ah, that's a nice draw to see. Oh, yeah, okay. Transit. He just needs to wait it out. He does have a Sludge Belcher also on turn five, so doesn't feel too bad going up against Hunter. Now the Abusive Sergeant uh, just sitting there. It's going to start to feel a little bit threatening, but well, Transit doesn't have too much he can do against it. What's rough is that he's going to be taking a lot of damage from this Abusive Sergeant, and uh, he doesn't have the coin to coin out the Twilight Drake on turn three or anything like that. So it's a little bit off. He's trying to gain some moral support by just hovering over the Golden Savannah's card. <laughs> Ooh, well, he gets a bonus blow now. 
Yep. Oh, that's not too bad. That'll be a nice cycle next turn. I didn't see what he grabbed out of his hand. The mad scientist. Oh, mad scientist, of course. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, uh, it's definitely kind of the go-to here, but he's could go for really the coin big Leoc play, then play the uh, <laughs> play the bow next turn. I like the mad scientist though. I think it's. I mean, having the ability to coin out a pile of shredder is pretty nice too. Yeah, I personally I prefer to keep the coin. Um, yeah, you can still play the bow next turn if you need to. Oh, he's huh. I was wondering if he should be on the creeper. Well, if he draws into a knife juggler, could be helpful, of course. Could also be nice if he draws into a kill command too, right? So yeah, that's true. There's definitely it sets up for a little more. The mad scientist is definitely a bit more of a passive play for a surrender. Yeah. While it does have more attack, it doesn't really set anything up further. It simply just has one more attack. So I can see why surrender might be inclined to put down the creeper, but he's gonna go with the scientist at the end. Well, with the bow in hand, there's a really good chance he'll be able to get more charges out of this. So I think that's pretty good. But if I was transit, I'd be very tempted to silence it. I'd silence it, man. I mean, you have two yeah. of your owls in hand. I'd silence it. Uh, silencing scientists against hunter is one of the best science targets. I mean, obviously, these days with a uh, hybrid hunter, uh, you do have those Savannah high mains. You have the piloted shredders that you might want to silence also. True. But the secrets are generally more annoying, per se. And he doesn't know uh, what kind of hunter this is. The abusive sergeant first, you know, does kind of save face hunter a little bit. So we'll see. You know, the thing is, too, is that if he plays this Owl as well, it does make his Twilight Drake a little bit weaker. Yeah. But uh, I still like silencing that Mad Scientist. I would do it personally. You're not going to really find a lot of other silence targets, like you mentioned. Um, <laughs> well, both players playing really patient and calm. I do like that. These guys. I mean, yeah, Surrender joked about how it should be an easy one for him, and Transit yeah. feels a lot more confident. But at the end of the day, this is a pretty big rivalry match, in fact. There Transit we go. going for the silence. Surrender giving a respectful nod, saying, all right, all right. Yep. Uh, ooh, two bows in yeah. hand for Surrender. Uh, not the greatest. Well, he can still do some decent damage this turn. Uh, he could also coin out that pile of Shredder, could play his animal companion as well. Let's see, I kind of like the piloted shredder this turn. Yeah. Hold on to the coin, next turn you'll have uh, potentially five mana, so you could bow and haunted creeper, you could uh, So you mean not the piloted shredder this turn? Oh yeah, you're right, because he's on yeah. turn three. Our monitor is so tiny, it's really hard to see sometimes. I think, mm, I think the bow and just clearing the owl with the bow, keeping the scientist up is possibly not a bad idea. Uh, you do have that second bow to fill up uh, your charges once again if you need. Obviously, of course, you will need to pay out some for that, but... Okay, Animal it is. Oh, and he gets Hogger, too, wow. or Huffer, rather. Huffer, yeah. <laughs> so plenty of damage there. Okay. That's hard for Handlock to deal with, too. Oh, Unless you draw is Dark it? Bar. Okay, but it's now... Uh, now he, that means he can't put down his Twilight Drake. Yeah, but I think that's, he's definitely okay delaying to uh, get rid of that Huffer. If you play the Twilight Drake, that Huffer gets to do eight damage, potentially, or, uh, you know, really do a lot to that Twilight Drake too, so. You're still gonna have the Twilight Drake in hand. You've got two Sludge Belchers. So the safety is still there. Twilight Drake, you know, of course, gives you better board presence, but it's it's a risk. You're rolling the dice a little bit, right? Because you do open yourself up to taking even more damage to face. Hunter can produce quite a bit. Yeah, I think Chan... Um, well... Hmm. I think Chan... Putting the Twilight Drake is fine. The Dark Bomb would have also been fine, I think, either way. It's um, more just kind of what style he prefers to play as, and he's just going for a little bit more of an assertive plan this game. Because I think if you rush to a Dark Bomb that you just top-decked, 
I think it also telegraphs a little too much that you don't have Mo and Giants in hand. I do think that plays okay. an effect here. Yeah. And I think saying, all right, well, I challenge you. Do you want to whittle me down or do you want to deal with my minions is a little bit more of a strategic play uh, from the handlock's point of view. That's a good point. Uh, for a surrender, I mean, I think the shredder is just fine here. Oh, he's in fact going to coin out the Leopard Gnome too. Might as well. Uh, starting from here on out, he's not going to need the coin too much. Not true enough. Going to turn five, he has enough to cast everything he would want to cast in his hand right now. Ooh. Okay, so All there right. is one Taunt Giver. Well, Sludge right. Belcher is still better though. Buffer also, so that you can't get through the Sludge Belcher too easily. Yep. Transit also has that Shadow Flare to use on the Twilight Drake once it's been widowed down a little bit. Well, this is pretty clean. Yeah. Fine. Now, how is Transit going to deal with this Shredder? And also, Surrender, again, same choice. Do you put down the Mad Scientist? I think you do now, that especially since you have that bow already applied. Yeah, the hero power doesn't look too great right now. And you've got enough mana where you can save that Haunted Creeper for the kill command that you draw to. That's true. Now, if that scientist comes down, does Transit want to owl it again? It's, uh, it's With a bow out? Maybe. Yeah, I think maybe you do. Uh, it does limit your turn a little bit, but it's, you know... Depends on what comes out of the pilot. Of the you know, in suppose. fact, maybe you could Owl it and Shadow Flame your Owl. Or you have... Okay. Huh. Owl it and Shadow Flame the Owl. I actually kind of like that. And it, I mean, it doesn't feel the greatest, since all, you also have an Asian Watcher in hand, so it would be nice to use that if need be against uh, Savannah Highman or something like that, but... Well, you can probably kill whatever comes out of the pile of the shredder with the twilight drake yeah uh, in fact you can kill anything kill except anything. for except for a noitron okay you yeah. can kill anything except for or a shielded that comes out. uh oh yeah shielded minibot too yeah now that you mentioned it i, I remembered but yep. okay huh but if it doesn't have divine shield if it's not one of those two then uh you end up with a, an empty board and the ability to play some taunts a little bit later but oh and he's just gonna Okay, he's just gonna go for the defender and then clear it. Deal with the trap. And it's probably freezing trap too. We'll see. It is freezing trap, yeah. Okay, yeah. Alright. Yeah, we're seeing it on our screen. Alright, so transit. Kind of playing the gamble there, but with the bet that it's most like a freezing trap, given what's popular these days with hunters. And also, since we've already seen that shredder, you can imagine that the high mains are going to be there. We, we see it come out now, so Transit's lined up pretty well because he's got that shadow flame. Now, if you're going to do something that results in the death of your piloted shredder, you really don't want to put anything down until you make sure it's not Doomsayer. So just, uh, just a little thing. Well, it's it's always a debate when you have exactly this um, mana cost for whatever minion you want to put down. Because if you get a mana wraith, you also can't put it down. Yeah, that's true. But he also had uh, he also had haunted creeper and a bow in his hand too, and he's going to use a blast charge with the bow anyway. So he still would have been able to use most of his mana that turn. But we'll see what comes out of it. Uh, actually, he doesn't even need to attack because yeah, he's. In fact, I wouldn't. You're not going to kill it. Yeah, I think you don't. Well, hmm. well, I'm, I'm just wondering what he's worried about here, you know? Because if you shadow flame it, it's not going to lose really on anything else. He's going to go through it. Whoa, oh, armor smith. Okay, All right. well, <laughs> that's that's a drop. Oh, a siphon soul in the uh, handlock deck too. All right, All right, playing it really safe here. Yeah, a little bit of an uh, uh kicking it old school. I like it. So you can you can clear the board here for transit. You can shadow flame your ancient, and then you can attack one of the hyenas with your defender, and then dark bomb the other one if you want. Or you can even silence the hyena and I was then shadow say, flame. I like uh, I kind of like silencing the hyena and then shadow flaming personally because it leaves that uh, defender out, lets you get a little bit more damage to face. Yeah, I like that too. If he had one more mana, he could do a Silent Siphon Soul on that Savannah High Man. That would be pretty Ooh. nice. But unfortunately, that's not an option. Not really. 
I'm gonna just activate him after using Trap. Alright, so. Gets his defender back. There's a Shadow Plan. Okay. Very clear, or clean clear is what I want to say. Very clean clear. Yeah. 24 effective health for the Hunter, but things have really slowed down for him. Now there is a second. He's huh. a high main, and I think that's. Well, this one's just going to get siphoned sold then. Yeah, if he puts it down, uh, which I think Surrender kind of feels a need to at this point. But, hmm. like you said, I guess you haven't sold it, and now you can still clear the board. You have the Owl, you have the Dark Bomb. Um, True. Huh. You do have the Rag. I don't think it's that worth it. You also have, I guess, the Sylvanas. But... I mean, with only two cards left for Surrender, I think you're okay with having an empty board. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially when you know you're going to be able to put things down on that empty board like Savannah, Sludge yeah. Belcher, Ragnaros. Decent spot for Granted right now. So the two biggest threats are gone from the Hybrid Hunter. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough for Surrender to win from here. Yeah. So at this point, he's just going to start being down. He's wondering if he wants to play or hit face. Uh, but I think you kind of need to at this point. Yeah, you might as well. All right. Well, okay. Surrender is also running Dr. Boom. So a much heavier version of the popular uh, decks that have been going around these days. Okay. Now, Transit. Uh, huh. Well, damage can come in real quickly from Surrender at any point in time. Yeah, at really. 14 health, I'd be a little bit nervous about not putting the Sludge Belcher out there. Yeah, and it will survive one turn from Trans's point of view because he doesn't he doesn't see the Hunter's Mark. So uh, you do have that now. Hmm. Well, he's even got one Shadow Bolt. Yeah, wow. So concerned a bit about some of those higher health minions that you see now and then. Well, he hasn't gotten any of his giants, which has been slowing him down quite a bit. Uh, that Defender Vargas is also six mana, so that's a little rough. But I think for now, maybe the uh, Sludge Belcher is the answer. I feel like anything besides the Sludge Belcher is a, a bit of risk. If you're gonna play anything besides the Sludge Belcher, play Emperor Thorazin. Because if, yeah. if Ragnaros hits the spider, you're gonna feel pretty awful. Yeah, I think the Thorson, if you're going to play something else, is the way to go. Yeah. Because um, it at least gives you an immediate advantage for the next turn. Oh, wow, he's going to go for the rag, though. All right. It's such a risk if your opponent has double kill command or something like that. Uh, ah, that would be the only way to prevent it, obviously. But uh, let's see what the damage is. Uh, okay, oh, quick shot. Oh, wow. Okay, well. We knew whatever right. was coming out was going to get Hunter's Mark. All right, so he has eight damage so far, 10 damage. Oh, oh man. man. Leoc. It's Leoc. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, is He's, that enough? No, no, no not quite enough. two damage off. Still. So does he, he has to clear the rag at that point, I feel. I mean, you don't, I guess you don't have to. No, with actually with you just board, go you, forward. Yeah, you, you just really, go forward because you have your hero power. I agree. You're gonna get him down to two where you can kill him with the hero power the next turn unless he plays Jaraxxus or something like that. That Ragnaros has a one in four chance of hitting you, and even then, it's not even a problem. Yeah, I mean Transit really needs an anti kill bot. Yep, ignore it. He's just hoping his opponent doesn't have Jaraxxus. Yeah, oh, that is wow. it. And that's game number one, going Man, over to Surrender. That rag, it, it really was risky, but... Yeah. Sludge Belcher would have been a bit safer. Definitely safer. Even Thorson would not have caused that, because then he wouldn't have had two Spartalings to get buffed up by Leon. Very true, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think it was a bit of a... I it mean, was it, a bit of a gamble. Yeah, it was a gamble. I mean, you it ended up being a mistake because of how it worked out. And, and you know, honestly... I just can't imagine how that Ragnaros works out well for you because your opponent has a lot of health. That's what he was thinking is that I have to start taking my opponent's health down in some way, right? But I think there were better ways to go about I doing mean, that. I mean, I think simply not having drawn his giants actually really kind of 
made him really nervous, and he's like, shoot, what if I never draw them? Of course, we saw two Moan Giants coming in right away afterwards, so he would have actually been super safe with that Defender of Argus being in hand and those Giants yeah. being zero mana. And, you know, on top of that, uh, if he would have played Tharas, and he would have had the ability to play, like, Sylvanas Sludge Belch in the next turn, you know? Yeah, yeah, so there were definitely other options. I mean, it's not a straight-up misplay, but definitely a bit too much of a gamble, and in hindsight, obviously, didn't pay off as Transit now has to prepare to try to play some catch-up, but we're only one set down so far. Really speaks about the level of play that these guys want to show to uh, all the fans watching here in Korea. They really play very patiently, trying to take everything into consideration here. Uh, Surrender is leading 1-0. That's right. And Transit trying to catch up. He can still bring his handlock back out. And Surrender, his Hunter is now getting that W for him. So he has two other decks left, Druid and Warlock. But let's jump right into set number two to find out if Trans can tie it up before the break. All right, Warlock versus Mage this time around. And uh, ooh, duplicate unstable portal. Yeah, this is uh, actually grinder mage. Oh, okay. Yep, I was talking to Transit a little bit. Uh, I usually don't like to find out too much about the decks before we cast it because I like to be surprised. But I was talking to Transit, and uh, he said that he was inspired by watching Strife Crow and wanted to uh, play some grinder mage in the tournament. So here we go. All right. Well, we'll see how well he does with it. Handlock on the other side. Or surrender. Surrender looks like he's in just absolute pain with this mulligan process <laughs> here. Know. That poor guy having to mulligan. Yeah, I mean, the Dark Pond definitely a worthy keep uh, in case it's Mech Mage. Yeah. Not as popular anymore, but you still see it now and then pop up. We'll see if Grinder Mage can grind down Handlock. I have to admit, I'm not, I'm not terribly familiar with this matchup. I haven't. Uh, I've watched some streaming of this deck. Yeah. From Strife Crow, of course, but uh, I haven't played it yet myself, so. I mean, there's a couple variations, of course, with the Grinder Mage 2 yeah. now that has been developed a couple of times. I mean, Major it's Double Grinder has been coming out here and there. It's been around so, for a while. Yeah, so Veet's making a really good run with that, too. But yeah, Transit's super happy about that BGH coming in hand. Yeah, it's pretty nice. As you should be. Do you uh, coin anything out here? I don't know. I don't. I don't think you coin out. Mad scientists are on sale. Wow, transit or just going. Oh, he's with the going e for it. Yeah, he's. Whoa, he's going for the coin too. All right, and the unstable portal. All right, just Let's see what he gets. Putting that threat uh -huh. factor down. Okay, not the greatest, but he's just gonna let it sit there. Yeah. He used his coin to get that though. Well, it would have been pretty crazy if he got. Like a really big legendary for cheap right there. I mean, he's got he's got a nice curve though uh, through turn four, so it's not the biggest deal. He can go mad scientist, arcane intellect, water elemental. Yeah. So it doesn't really hurt his ability to put stuff out. Surrender is like talking to the wall of the booth. He's like, what do you think, wall? Yeah. You no, know, that's a really good. <laughs> the thing is, though, is that's actually a really good way to play. Is no, yeah. to explain what you're doing out loud to whatever you know. Explain it to your lamp on your desk. Because by verbalizing it, you kind of, yeah, you make yourself see it in kind of a different light. You know, that's what I've realized when I stream is like with other games, a lot of times the talking really gets in the way. But when you're playing Hearthstone, explaining your actions while you stream has actually helped me quite a bit personally. It's not for everybody, but I think generally it's a pretty good idea. It can feel awkward at first, but it's definitely worth it. I I really put the hurt on a grinder mage the other day because he got captain's parrot out of an unstable portal oh man and then i killed it while his duplicate was up oh so boy. we got two more captain's parrots and he wasn't playing any pirates i mean i know really i used the have sorry. some faith in unstable portal i used a sorry emote that time <laughs> really what did you not say well met love is in the air in the hearthstone studio that's great that's right Love and Hearthstone. That's a book I'll write someday. <laughs> Gonna get a free secret off of that. Now, ooh, Shade 2 here for Transit, so. And that is gonna be the Ice Block, so Transit now has a bit more time than he would have, and Surrender's gonna take a couple turns to figure out exactly which one that is. Exactly one more turn's worth of time. 
to figure out what secret that is? Oh, I mean to survive. Oh, yes. yes. That's what Ice Block does. Oh, he See? is playing Major Domo. Oh, cool. All right. So I've been playing this recently after uh, watching some of make a yeah. pretty good run with it within the Legend uh, ranks. You've been talking about this one a lot lately. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty solid. You know, it's actually surprisingly solid. I'll put it that way. Um, the Major Domo plus the Ice Block obviously has some good synergy there. Uh, as right. long as they don't have, you know, the Kazan Misty or something like that coming out. No, I think uh, this can this can work out all right for Transit. Uh, I didn't get to see all the other cards he has in there, but obviously we saw the Alex Straza. That's kind of the the big ones are obviously what matters, and how you get there. Those depend a lot on the tech choices you have. Uh, he's just gonna go in and use a shade early to trade that in, not too concerned about keeping that alive. Yeah, you can clear a bit of the board this way. Now, yeah, you definitely do some here. Do you put down your Acolyte? It's a bit of a question. You really need to abuse your draw engines quite well to win this. I mean, generally, I mean, if you were to compare it to something else, obviously, Freeze Mage kind of being the most similar, right? You yeah. kind of want to get your draw engines going, get your combos, and then try to burst them down. I mean, a turn six Sylvanas is going to be pretty nice against this deck as well, too. Yeah. So he's not gonna he's not gonna save it for like a turn where he plays the Acolyte of Pain and Ping. So you might as well play it now and leave yourself the ability to play Sylvanas next turn. Yeah, so Surrender does have Thorson in hand. Mm. Uh, hmm. He also has a Shadow Flame, but you know, I think just the Thorson here is the way to go. Might have to Polymorph that now. Uh, yeah. Huh. I suppose Give you me. do, don't you? I mean, he can he can polymorph that, and then he can also kill Lothep. Oh, there is a golden major domo. Yeah, you, you can major kill domo off. executus. <laughs> you can kill off the Lothep too. You're right. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. Huh. I think that's gonna be your best bet, isn't it? Yeah. Just to deal with what's on the board right now. You're left with him having a 1-1 one, one and you have you don't have anything. But you could play the hyena, actually. It wouldn't be a bad turn to play the hyena. Yeah. Just actually, get that out there. Yeah. That yeah, you're too. right. Not Okay, now that we're talking with the hyena, I, I'm a, I'm much more okay with that play. Actually. What would you do? Well no, I was wondering if you actually just take the risk and put down Sylvanas, but Ooh, I feel like that's opening yourself up for a lot of damage. Especially because Dr. Boom, well, I mean, he doesn't know Dr. Boom is coming, but still, going to this many mana. And well, sheeping Thorazin is, wow. And now, Transit, this is what he did in game one as well, too. He went for the more aggressive play, went for the bolder play. And he I'm, does lock up Lothab. Yeah, I'm okay with this, though, right? Because now Surrender has a bit well, of a debate on what he wants to... Uh, what he wants to put down, because that Sylvanas is there. I mean, I think now you, uh, well, yeah, you could do that. Okay. Or you could have just run in and traded and then use Mortal Coil either way. Yeah, Although you I... do it first, because you don't want to get a, a duplicate for a low time, so. Yeah. Just in case. All right. Well, but Transit basically got the clear that he was looking for, so I don't think it's too bad. And the Big Game Hunter is definitely the go-to here. Uh, then, okay, so that the duplicate now out. All right, that's actually really good. Duplicating. Against Handlock, yeah. Yeah, duplicating wow. Big Game Hunter is pretty sick. All right, I like it. I like it too, Chobra. We both like it. Yeah, no, this is, this is good. Great. Just don't put down the hyena now. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. I hope he doesn't make that mistake. But we'll see what Surrender comes up with. Uh, life taps for a Sludge Belcher. Uh, the Sludge Belcher probably going to be the go-to here. I mean, there is a lot in Surrender's deck that can do damage that is not a giant as well. Now, ooh. Okay, well, you can't... Hmm. Well, he could... No, he can't hero power, can he? Do you just arcade intellect here? You could also... Since since you're banking on getting your BGH back, you could also polymorph that Sludge Belcher. I was going to say, actually, that's that's what I kind of like now that I'm so looking you, at this. And then you can put down your Water Elemental, too. Getting two more Water Elementals isn't too bad, either. 
you could. I would be. Con I would actually be inclined to polymorph and then arcane intellect. Because it's you. You know, when you have these draw cards, you're looking for a turn where you can fit it in without too much danger. Right. True. So I do kind of like that. Again, so in that case, I guess you, you would just arcane intellect first, right? Just to see what you get out of it. Yeah. Because the thing is, is having he really needs to prioritize having multiple BGHs, I think, because the frost elementals are going to die right away to the giants, right? So. True, but at the same time, here's the thing, right? You have that major dome, and that's where that comes in handy, is that if, if it dies, you have the hero power for the Giants, and the water wants to freeze up the Giants for at least another turn or something like that. So I don't think it's too bad. I mean, water elements are just annoying to deal with, because also if Surrender comes out, um, worst case transit, right? If he... So if Surrender has to kill the water elemental himself with a Giant, they're frozen for two turns. So he misses yeah, out on 16 potential, or t technically 24 damage per Giant. And so sure. the water elements do pose a really big question, and Transit doesn't have to feel too concerned about attacking with them first either. Surrender, meanwhile, is just going to life tap, and he's going to get a Mountain Giant. Doesn't have any Taunt Givers. Does have a Hellfire and, a sh uh, and two Shadow Flames, actually. Uh, but man, his hand's been really locked up. I, I really, you know, looking back, I really like the Sylvanas play. Uh, locking up his hand enough that he had to clear his own minions and then put down the Dr. Boom. Uh, I mean, it didn't really, either way, he was only going to play Dr. Boom, but he lost a lot of his board right there. And just tries to just... Bomb go. <laughs> no, he's just hitting face with them. Because he knows, he doesn't want to give, yeah. he doesn't want to give that duplicate. He knows what's coming. <laughs> Transit can just kind of let that BGH sort of sit there all day. Yeah, fact, I mean, he, he, can, he can just keep whittling away right here. Well, he could even run into one of the bombs as well. Or just well, shoot no, it with you can't. Right? You can't on your. Oh turn, yeah, of course yeah. you can't. Yeah. Duh. Uh, I mean, oh, sludge wow. belcher. Yeah, I guess you sludge, but oh, but then you're well. Okay, getting your sludge belcher back isn't too bad either. Yeah, yeah, nice. getting multiple sludge bad belchers is really nice against a lot of minion damage. Okay. I mean, I think he's I think he's giving up on those, and, and then he can play the Sludge Belcher, and that will survive even longer. Um, Don't give up on the BGH. I think no matter what, if you're if you're not going to play Major Domo, which I wouldn't this turn, then you just Arcane Intellect first, no matter what. Yeah, Arcane Intellect, then uh, play the Sludge Belcher probably. Because I forget what else is in his deck, so I didn't memorize the entire deck list when we <laughs> saw it on screen. But you never know. Um, all right, well, he's going to go for the clear first. And okay. All right, well, what? where does that leave us? Okay. All right, so that way you can guarantee killing the Giant with the hero power. It's frozen. It can't kill your Sludge Belcher. Your Sludge Belcher uh, probably won't die to the Boom Bot, although it can. If he would have ran his Water Elemental into the Giant, he would have left the BGH as the only one out. Then he would have had the ability to ping Flame Strike in a future turn. But the Giant is frozen, at least. It is frozen, yeah. The beauty of Water Elementals. Yeah, all right, surrender this time, going for the rag gamble. You know, when you play Major Domo and you get Ragnaros Ooh. out of that, I feel like it should take the other guy's Ragnaros. Oh, oh man! Look at that. All right, I like it. Yeah, uh, you can still ping the Mountain Giant too. Yeah, yeah, you totally can. And you can still uh, Arcane Intellect too. Oh man, I think you have to go for it. Transit, please Arcane Intellect first. Like, just, like, I've been, yeah, we've been sitting on that card for so long. Yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, don't play Dr. Boom, though. Yeah, no need to this week. He's going to make sure his rag can be healthy. And all right, his Sludge Buster still lives. Very nice. Oh, man, is it going to, uh, who's going <laughs> to win the rag battles? You saw Travis get all excited. Here we go. Oh, oh he gets it. Oh, wow. Wrecked with a KT. So, with ma and with Major Domo, we might see a double rag. Yeah. Like a rag Ragception. on the board and rag as the player. Ragception, yep. 
And then, and then your hero rag just auto hero powers your own rag because he's like, we can't yeah. have two. <laughs> they like, can no, only be there one. There can be only one. <laughs> Highlander Ragnaros. Yep. Wow. Well, this has gotten interesting. Well, you have the BGH, right? And yeah, that's true. it it feels bad because you know, you know, you probably want it for me, uh, Major Double, if you expect it to be coming out. Which I don't know if Surrender really does because Grinder Mage has different variations and. Major Domo made the biggest splash recently in the West. The Major Domo one's but pretty new, though, so the fact that Trans is even playing this in a green tournament yeah, exactly. is pretty surprising. Yeah, I think that's really working for his benefit. He's going to get two more Sludge Vouchers, but doesn't, which doesn't feel too bad. No, it feels really good against a deck that wins by hitting you with Giants. And he's going to BGH the Rag, which Trans is okay with. Another Ice Block. Very nice. Okay. I think now that... All right. Uh, well, yeah, I guess you definitely go with Dr. Boom here. Uh, but you can start to think about how to set up for a major Domo turn here because you do have two ice blocks now yep. working for you. Now, he doesn't need to. Now, here's the other thing about major Domo, right? So when you play this deck, it's it's always exciting to try to make the major double work, but you don't have to force it. You can win so easily without it because the rest of it is just a typical grinder mage. Grinder mage doesn't always have to have one win condition. Right. The major double works because it actually buys you a lot of time. Right, because you don't want to kill the major domo, so essentially you just get a big creature out there yeah. that just doesn't get dealt with sometimes. Yeah, it, it, it's basically just like having another rag in some ways because it's like this threat you need to deal with because it will keep just tacking on a lot more damage to you but at the same time with the ice box if you kill it they get like an easy turn with three eight damage for two mana and for something like handlock that hero power can really do work i mean if you're playing something with a bunch of minions it might not feel as bad to give that hero power for one turn but for this it's gonna feel pretty bad now transit was pretty happy as boombot only did two damage not allowing for any extra Molten Giants, should they be in hand, which they are. And he doesn't have a Sun Fury Protector, so... Okay, and the Sludge Bow here, all right. Ice Block, too. Ice Barrier, yeah. Or Ice Barrier, yeah. Hmm. This is an interesting turn <laughs> for Trans. Here's what you do, you run your Boom Bot into the Sludge Belcher, then that sends a bomb to hit the Molten Giant for four. Then you and flame play strike. strike. <laughs> play Ice Barrier and you just like drop the mouse and walk out of the booth. You're like, boom. <laughs> um, right. I don't... Yeah. Huh. He's got a lot of options. I... I don't think that, uh, if, I mean, if you want to play it the most consistent way, you would run Dr. Boom into the Sludge Belcher, right? And then uh, if you run your Boombot into the taunt that comes out of that, then at least you can kill the hero power. Still play a secret and a Sludge Belcher. All right, well. Flame Strike it is. Okay, well, this means that you only need three damage from the Boombot. It's the Molten Giant. Oh. And, oh! Oh, he okay, well, he it. still gets the hero it's power. It. Yeah, it works out. All right. Yeah. And he's like, do I put down the hyena? Do I scare him with the hyena? It's time. It's time. All right. Well, the, the hyena, hyena finally coming down. Surrender's like, <gasps> no way. <laughs> the hyena. It's like, I can't deal with this hyena. All right. It's like, oh, my owls are beasts. <laughs> I can't let him steal those owls. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least now Surrender doesn't have to be too concerned about some crazy legendary coming out from the uh, Unstable Portal, because now we know yeah. that it's not, you know. It's true. Until the second Unstable Portal gets thrown. Oh, that's true. Is he running two? I, I don't know. Probably. Generally, you usually only run Do you? one, oh, okay. just because you have so many other tech cards you're going for. Nah, it's, I suppose. Yeah, this is one of the few decks that I just have not gotten around to playing any games with yet. Yeah, I mean, you, we say it made a splash, but it's not like super popular that everyone's playing in a ladder or something like that because no. it is. It's it's a tough deck to learn for one because it kind of feels like grinder mage and kind of feels like freeze mage, but it's neither. Um, and really learning to 
you know, when to use a major domo or when to use it as a threat uh, is pretty important. And also learning to win without it, because so many times you win without it. Oh, that'll take care of the board. All right. That'll take care of an imaginary weapon. Oh, wow. Okay, well, Polymorph. Wow. And no more giants in Surrender's hand if this one gets taken out that way, so. And it's both Molten Giants taken care of, too, so. Yeah. Transit has to feel pretty good about that. Yeah, Sludge Belcher, Polymorph. <laughs> and Transit has an Alex Straza still in his deck, so if he Polymorphs and Surrender gets a little freaked out, so yes, he actually Keel Bot and Transit draws into the Alex Straza, that's just like the dream come true. He's got his own rank two, his Norris on left, he's got two Frost Bolts. I mean, Transit, I think, is really good shape right now. Still yeah. has that Major Domo in hand. Basically, from here on out, like, he can really draw out his turns really um, to with much more impact than Surrender can. Yeah, I mean, the only big danger is Sylvanas Shadow Flame from Surrender. That could that could turn things around if he does grab, like, you know, Major Domo or something like that, but... Yeah, Trans is looking okay for the moment. Still, there is plenty of health gain in Surrender's deck as well. Yeah, the timing of that Alex Strasse coming out is actually going to be pretty important from here on out. And all right, just uh, defend of on the sheep. Yep. And healing up once. Going to clear that Sludge Belcher as well as he can. Still leaves that a scenic swamp. But there is another Flame Strike yep. here for Transit. Well, well, Surrender looks a little flustered. And do you ping him or do you use the Acolyte of Pain? I or think the Ice Barrier, here. too. I think you Acolyte here, no problem. I have to play that Ice Barrier sometime as well. Yeah, you definitely want to play it at some time where, you know, you can guarantee to proc it because you could get into a situation where they can kill you without proccing it or, you know, popping the Ice Block without proccing the uh, Ice Barrier. Transit's like, all right, that gum has done its job. Blown enough bubbles. Mountain Giant. I hate mana Mountain Giant. Yeah. Surrender wondering if he wants to silence this uh, Acolyte. I think it might be better to save that for a taunt. Yeah, I think I think you save it. I mean, there's so many yeah. other big minions that you're worried about here. It's going to be one of those games where both players are going to get through most of their deck anyway, so by denying the draw, yeah, you slow that down, but you've already been through most of the deck at this point. So it's now, debatable how much it helps. Transit has much less cards. We haven't seen them count yet, but on our other screen, the thickness of their remaining decks are really, they show a really big difference. Okay. Well, yeah, might as well ping. Yeah. See what you get out of it. You can still sludge belt your ice barrier. Ooh. And it looks like that's what he's gonna do. Yeah. yeah got a mad scientist. I believe his remaining secrets are in hand though. It's just that it's like an ice blob. I don't think he's running any more secrets aside from that. Yeah. Man, those duplicated sludge belchers doing a lot of work now. Yeah, only six cards left for oh, only six cards left for transit. Okay, I think they actually both have exactly six now. I guess that one extra draw was making the big difference there in visual. Hmm. Oh, you're gonna get the draw from that Acolyte of Pain either way. Yeah. At some point. So do you really need it right now this second? Or do you need to do one damage to face? I, I'm in favor of just doing one damage to face. Me too. Willing him down because you're out of mana anyway. Nothing you draw right now is going to make the biggest difference in the world. Yeah, if you have a big problem with your hand next turn, you can always run into it. Uh, transit is. Oh, he is going to hit. Okay. Oh, star is it? All right. Well. Now surrender. Um. That Twilight Drake isn't going to be the greatest thing, but you can put it down. Uh, you also have that Sylvanas if you want. 
but he's actually just, okay, he's actually just gonna go to face. All right, well, the ice barrier doing its work. Yep, absorbing uh, one of those giants anyway. Now, he's got to clear this board, though. Because he, if he turns into Ragnaros, you know, he's not going to have an easy time if there's a bunch of minions on the board. I, huh. <sighs> <sighs> now, you're getting closer to a turn where you might want to have to use Major Domo, and that Thorsen is going to help a lot. Now, do we transit? Oh man, if, is he going to silence this Twilight Drake? I was wondering that, because it looks so tempting here. It does. Now, the Sylvanas is free to enter for Surrender. Yep. You can just run everything into the Mountain Giant if that happens, though. So. Yeah, that's true. Although, then you might give Major Domo over to your opponent, which is not great. Mm, generally not great. Generally not great. But uh, yeah. if he draws into his Frost Bills, it might not be too bad. Okay, well, uh, I mean, Surrender, I, huh. Hmm. He has an anti heal by. I think he's trying to save that for a much bigger impact because he's expecting the Astros to come through. Yeah. Now, here's the funny thing. Transit. He can just Alex Strauss himself after he turns into Dragons. Yeah, that's true. So, Surrender may be saving that anti kill bot for nothing. If it comes to that, which I think it might actually, given how this game is going. Rarely do you need to use that combo, but given how this game is going, I actually think Transit may need to take it to that point. Now, Savannah's Shadow Flame would steal Major Domo, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah, it would. Uh, no, I'm gonna wait. Right, he's gonna, gonna put down the Sylvanas. Does yeah. he? I wouldn't Shadow Flame if I was Surrender. Well, let's see. There would be 10 damage coming in otherwise. Grabbed it from his hand. Oh, man. Transit looks so happy. He's like, yes. No kidding. Wow. Wow. Oh man, another Sludge Belcher too. But I I, I think you, huh. he... He had five damage from Sylvanas to clear the ice block, so couldn't he have just Shadow Flame the Mountain Giant? Or Mountain Giant, rather? Yeah. I, I actually don't know why he Shadow Flamed his Sylvanas, you're right. Me neither, but it looks like Major Domo is going to make a very successful appearance here. Yeah, I mean, what can Surrender do here? Sure, you he can heal up, but then you know that Astraz is coming. Yeah. And if you kill this, he turns into a Ragnaros with an Ice Block, and Transit has another Ice Block in hand. He can do two damage, in or fact, he can do eight damage per turn. Well, in fact, he can actually uh, Alex Straza himself and then Ice Block, so he has 15 health yeah, and I the mean, uh, Ice Block just... on top of that, yeah. And a Sludge Belcher coming. It's looking pretty good for Transit here in game number two. I think so. for as these are all the cards he has. Surrender can't win from this, I don't think. Yeah, he's got nothing else in his hand. Yeah, I think uh, Shadow Flaving Sylvanas was... That was the biggest uh, pretty, mistake pretty big for mistake, him, yeah. yeah. Um, I think he, because this you, game has been drawn out too much, I think he was just too concerned about keeping more damage on board and not calculating the possibilities of how to pop that ice block. Uh, I, think you're, I think you're right, but Sylvanas would have been able to pop that just fine. Yeah. And she would have brought the threat that if uh, something big would come out, she could steal it too. You're right. Which is crucial to this stage, uh, to this stage of the game. So. Yeah, yeah. In, in hindsight, one of the biggest misplays that Surrender could have made this game. But, yeah. uh, I mean, very understandable misplay, but definitely a misplay. All right, well, the anti heal bot comes down too, so you, you can just have a your opponent now. Yeah, that's true. In fact, if he does that... And then you can still ice block. Yeah, if he, if he Alex Strauss is his opponent, 
He can do 11 damage out of the 15 that would remain. Wait. Wait. What? Oh, no, no, no. He's got lethal, man. No, no, I know, but... Oh. You can't, you can't do that, because then Surrender could have actually killed him, because he could have killed Executus ah, you're right. first, and then, or he popped the Ice Block and then killed the Executus. Oh, no, actually, no, he wouldn't have had lethal, because he needed one more minion to do that. But either way, he brings himself up to 15 health, so this is the safer play. Wow, there it is. And everyone's cheering, because, I mean, it's just well played. Yeah. A 15 health Ragnaros for Transit yeah. brings him tied 1-1 against Surrender. And man, that's actually a big hit to Surrender's ego, too. It's like, I just played Major Domo against you in a professional game and beat you. So that's take that, huge. old teammate. You know, one of the big edges I think that Transit brings into this is that he's going to be bringing decks that uh, not a lot of these Korean pros have a lot of experience against. And Grinder Mage is certainly one of those. I very much doubt that Surrender has played against that a lot. Yeah, probably not. I mean, even on ladder and uh, on NA, it's yeah. not that common, uh, especially the Major Domo version of it, just because, yeah. you know, people like it, people try it, but it's it's hard to learn for some people, and it's, it's a pretty slow deck, so it's not that popular on ladder. But yeah, Surrender looks a little bit defeated. I mean, he's kind of chuckling and not feeling so great at the same time. Transit, meanwhile, looking really confident, got that win he needed to tie up 1-1. We will be taking a quick break, guys, and be returning to set number three, Team Surrender and Transit looks like it might be the best round of 16 match we have.
Welcome back, everyone. We are now at set number three between Surrender and Transit. What could be the best match we have in the round of 16 between two very high-rated players. Surrender currently ranked second in terms of world championship points in Korea. I feel like he's still recovering from being beaten by that uh, Major Domo Grinder Mage as well, too. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty humiliating defeat when it actually happens. Not because it's like an easy deck to play or anything. Not just because of the way the card works. I mean, it's a card you right. never really see. It's a really insane card. But there is Transit, who got that win to title. 1-1, one, one. both of them left with two classes each. Druid for both sides left. And then, in fact, Warlock left for both sides. So yeah. we might be seeing some mirror matchups going forward. But we'll have to find out which class each player is bringing into set number three. Yeah, Surrender still has that kind of like empty smile where he looks like his soul has been stolen out from under him with Major Domo Executus. Yeah. But Transit looking a lot more confident after that win. And we heard that interview, Transit, in fact, has, you know, he felt, it sounded a little bit like he felt a little sad that his teammates didn't really respect him as much as uh, he wished he was back when they were all together on Team Godzio. Now his, most of his teammates on the coup all killers and him and one other teammate going on to form their own team, GG Gaming. But we'll find out if he can redeem himself in set number three. versus Druid. All right, well, most likely mid-range Druid for both of these guys, but yeah, it's mid-range Druid for Transit. Um, and I was talking to him about his decks before the match today. And uh, we'll see what kind of Druid it is for Surrender. Oh, wow. Well, double Innervate in hand here for uh, Surrender. Yeah. Which is making him really consider keeping that Azure Drake. Even if you don't Innervate it out on turn one. He's got uh, the having, coin. Having the choices, yeah, to innervate out on um, turn two with the coin and then having another innervate is, that's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. uh, Surrender really wants to think through his other choices, though. Man, what would have been crazy is if he kept up. Oh, wow, wow growth. Nice. That's a really great setup for Surrender. Transit throws everything back and... Oh, he gets a shade though. It could be worse, could be worse. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not too bad. It's just not like the best hand, but it's not too bad. But obviously in a mirror matchup, whoever it's, has a uh, coin gets a huge advantage. Well, it's much better for Surrender. And he's got, I mean, Surrender's got a just straight up better hand too. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Surrender has a losing record in mirror matches in general. I mean, it's a Druid versus Druid. He's also won two. Huh, interesting. That's actually a pretty interesting stat. Transit, yeah. meanwhile, eight and seven in mirror matches. Okay. Just a 1-1 one, one record for Druid mirrors, but that's a pretty interesting stat. It probably doesn't hold too much meaning, but it's just kind of fun to look at. Now, mirror matches, you know, the, the early game card draw does affect it a little bit more than other ones do, but uh, it certainly is a bit of a different game strategically as well, too, when you're playing against oh, man, relatively transit. the same deck. That was a tense yawn. <laughs> I am pretty sure if I read his lips correctly, he said some not so nice words in the booth when he used the wild draw. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Transit was Transit was going off <laughs> on surrender there. But Well, at least we don't have mics in there. Yeah. <laughs> So just your power, not much else Transit can do, and Surrender's going to be pretty happy to see that, that That's there's no innervates coming up from the other side. It's a two health swing in the mirror. Oh, Transit now in the lead. All the time. But, huh, innervating out the Azure Drake or the Harrison? It's a good question. Uh, the Harrison gets you more damage immediately. The Azure Drake does get you the cycle. I like I'm the actually, Azure Drake because uh, it gives you. Well, uh, he's going into turn six, so do you want to play the Harrison kind of off curve? Wait, or? you mean turn four? Because he innervated that Azure Drake. Oh right, right, yeah. right. Well, you wouldn't be able to play the Azure Drake either way then the next turn. So yeah, this so. gives you more stuff to do potentially next. Yeah, turn. I guess so. Personally, I was a little bit in favor of the Harrison uh, just because. Most likely, Transit didn't have an answer for 4 damage anyway. Uh, so then you could get an easy 10 damage in, or 5 damage in minimum. Uh, most likely 10. 
But either way, he puts on the Azure Drake, and Transit still does not have an answer. I mean, I think the I think the shade is kind of the only thing he can really do here. Yep. Uh, Transit. I mean, the only thing he would be concerned about with that shade is if he's scared of like a swipe coming out. But I don't think it's I don't think you can really count on that too much. Whoa. Okay. He's gonna go for the wrath though. Hmm, so he can take it out with the hero power potentially the next turn, I suppose. I, th I think he's probably planning to get with the keeper of the grove. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, to set that up. Now there is a nice wrath target though. Oh well, you got a second. Oh. Hmm. Huh. So he could still hero power the yeah. Azure Drake and wrath the piloted shredder. Okay. That's uh, that's possible. He's just not really getting anything on the on the board himself. Yeah, he's playing very uh, slow and from behind. I mean, it's kind of what he has to do in this case. He just had a slower start, you know? Yeah, I mean, the opponent used a lot to get that ahead, though. So it doesn't feel too bad, right? Because you are feeling pretty good about your hands going forward from turn five to six. And you've got that Thoris in. You have your combo. Uh, but Surrender may not even need his combo is what we're looking at at this point. Yeah. We'll see what Transit draws into. Yeah, see, so th we saw this happen before too in the mirror match where it feels so nice to have all those ramp cards early, but we're looking at what happens to Surrender Hand is that actually he's only left with more ramp cards and he doesn't really have an answer. So he really needs to bank on his Harrison doing a lot of work, but it's not necessarily going to. I mean, Transit definitely has ways to take care of this. If I was Transit, I might even charge this. Yeah, just to get rid of that Harrison, deny that five extra damage. Surrender is only down to four cards. And, all right, well, he has another Pilot Shredder. That's not too bad. But Surrender's starting to get a little bit concerned. Just a little bit. Because yeah, the fact that he Transit... Shouldn't feel, he shouldn't feel too, feel too bad, though. Getting oh, he shouldn't feel too out there bad. Using his hero power. I still think he's in pretty good shape right now. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely not, like, behind or anything. But the fact is, his advantage is not there as much anymore. Yeah. Because seeing as Transit hasn't played almost any of his cards or any minions, really, it's that you have to guess he has at least one part of his combo. And he has big cards like this. Yep. So, all right. Well, if Surrender draws into a Savage Roar here, though, the game is just over. Yeah. What is it? Drew the okay. claw. Okay. All right. So can't end the game just yet. Okay. Oh, so Surrender can, he can still get lethal next turn. Yeah. He can clear this hmm. uh, Thorazin if he wants to as well, too. A couple different ways. I wonder. Huh. Grab three and run okay. into two, two. Don't bother cycling. Oh, he's going to go for the cycle, though. Right. Okay, yep. I think that's fine, too. Draws it through the claw, so he might as well run in, then, with the pile of the shredder. Yeah, see what you get out of that. And, all right, it's just going to be another 2-2. It's spell power, though, so that's it's nice to know. He's going to go for charge. Yeah, surrender now just setting up for lethal here. So he has eight on board, and yep. then he has ten more coming in. And that so should be game. I don't believe there's a way that he can clear enough to not die to the combo. Well, I mean, Surrender doesn't have the full combo right now. Oh, he has you're a 10 right. damage combo. So wow. Transit needs to clear this. Um, yeah, and he's just going to go for the big clear here. That's a full combo use, but Transit still doesn't feel too bad. Now, the problem is he's exactly in combo range, so he can die any turn. Oh, wow. Big game Hunter, though, here for Surrender which can come in really good handy because Transit has that Dr. Boom in hand that he wants to put down for extra pressure on his side. All right, Surrender. We'll see what he wants to do. Hmm. I mean, doing four damage now would put him very close to death, but not necessarily any more close to oh, death. Man, oh, man, I wow. was wondering, see, I was wondering, because in Surrender's shoes right now, he really just wants to race him down, because yeah. he has that force of nature. So I oh, thought maybe he was going to put them down. Now, well, he does have lethal technically this way. Yeah, so I think that's fine, though. Oh, oh wow. never mind. Yeah, seriously. Not fine at all. 
Okay, I mean, Surrender's still, I mean, right, he still just needs to draw a Savage Roar, and the game is over. Or even a swipe, actually. Uh, that's Thorazin. That's Thorazin, though. That is not lethal. Um, but you, you might as well just Thorazin and Hero Power at this point. Yeah, I think so. You're not really compelled to clear the Azure Drake or anything like that, because yeah. you're still way higher in health. It's still not looking good for Transit. Yeah, I mean, Transit's really racing the clock here. It's just a matter of time before that Savage Roar comes out for a Surrender. Or a Swipe. Um, so Surrender trying to think of perhaps some whatever options he has. Well, quite frankly, there's no benefit to not play Thorson. Yeah. So I think playing Thorson is fine. Now Transit has to know that that's either a Savage Roar or a Force of Nature, right? In fact, he has to know it's a Force of Nature because he didn't use Savage Roar on his minions earlier. The Wild Growth not going to work out for him. Uh... I think Transit actually needs to just, yeah, he needs to keep the road that and then put Sylvanas down. Yep. Alright, so Transit still has a lot of damage to do. He used one combo. And... Ah, uh, it's it gotta be Swipe. Yep. <laughs> it was inevitable, in. man. I mean, he had so much that he could draw into. Yeah, I mean, and it shouldn't feel too bad for Transit either. I mean, given the cards he started with, he really put up a good fight there. Yeah, well, I mean, in the mirror match, it's the hands matter quite a bit, and it was a pretty amazing hand for Surrender starting off, and less amazing for Transit. That guy's shirt has the dictionary definition for other. Okay. Written on his shirt. That's interesting. Some guy in the audience. I'd really like to uh, figure out why. But for now, Surrender takes the victory. That's what's important. Yep. One game away from making it onto the quarterfinals. Yeah, so Surrender uh, had a bit of a nervous uh, moment when he lost to the Major Dome and Grinder Mage, and he was a little bit nerve-wracking that he might not draw into lethal at the end there because he was really just relying on the draw at that point with only two cards in hand. Transit, meanwhile, I mean, he played well with what he could. The mirror matchup is tough because of that, uh, but he wants to fight back and get another win so they can go to that last set to determine who goes on to the quarterfinals. A lot on the line here, even though it's just a round of 16 between these two players. And so because Surrender's ID is get it by board clear, I surrender. That fan saying, get it by board clear, just going to go and take the last train and not wait for <laughs> the rest of the games. So we'll, let's find out how far we go. We are going to set number four between these two players. Warlock left for Surrender, uh, Druid, the choice for Transit, sticking with it. All right, well, we know what Warlock deck it is, we know what Druid deck it is, and feeling pretty good about that BGH and starting hand for Transit. Yeah, it'll certainly help a lot. He also has the coin this time, so that feels good. Yeah, it can be a tough matchup, though. The nice thing about Playing Druid into Handlock is at least you do have some more silence options to get rid of some of the taunts. Yeah. Huh. We'll see how it goes, though. I, w I do wonder if Transit just predicted that Surrender was going to bring Handlock today, putting BGH in both his Mage and Druid. I mean, both those classes tend to use at least one BGH yeah, when I you're think playing Grand Mage one. and whatnot. But the fact that he chose those two decks then uh, to come against it, I mean, we've heard that before. With Palm lad targeting Rini Hour's handlock with his deck choices. So and we'll find out. Maybe if Transit wins, we'll get to hear in an interview. But for now, uh, Transit, uh, his opening hand is it's all right. It's not the worst. He's got that shade. He's got that BGH. Yep. So overall, you can see Druid taking it a little bit more often in this matchup. And I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if that was mostly Druid versus Handlock as well. Yeah, it makes sense. Oh, wild growth here. A transit with a nice little smirk. He's like, yeah, that's right. My turn now. <laughs> Surrender's like, no. <laughs> it's yeah. coming back to bite me. Yeah, just life tap again. I mean, Surrender ramping towards that. Mount Giant also has that Twilight Drake in hand. Winning, uh, losing record again for Surrender, but he had that last time too, and it didn't end up mattering. 
Yeah, Transit also a very losing record here. Yeah. With Drury. Really I mean, losing. Yeah, well. his Drury just hasn't done well, but at the same time, he's just been in a slump overall. You know, this guy, yeah. his win rate in professional matches does not really reflect why there's hype around this guy. Cause yeah, it's a big reason why he didn't join the other players going to that new cool All Killers team. Yeah. But he's here to change some minds tonight, perhaps. All right, so Mountain Giant here. Oh, have that innervate. Yeah, I mean, you feel very compelled to BGH it, but it doesn't give you much of a turn afterwards. Yeah. Although if you do something like just put out Thor's and it's gonna die immediately, so you have to BGH it. Yeah, I think BGH is fine. Your power. All right, still some good options though for Surrender. He's got a lot of good stuff in his hand right now. Yeah, he's got that Twilight Drake. Um, that's gonna be the main thing. He's also got a Dark Bomb if he wants to use it on that BGH for now. Uh, but then if he uses Dark Bomb, the problem is he doesn't really have a turn. So, right. Uh, Twilight Drake, maybe Sludge Belcher, maybe just to buy yourself another turn so you can maybe play that Twilight Drake and Dark Bomb on turn six. Uh, I think that's all right. A Sludge Belcher just gets cleared so easily, too. Yeah, but whatever you've been down is going to be cleared just as easily because the Lothab is mean, also only five health. It's all about the delay, right? Yeah, I think the Sludge Belcher here because you, you probably want to save that Lothab for like turn seven or eight uh, to know? prevent the combo just in case it comes in and then regain tempo. And if there was no taunt as well, uh, and if he like innervated into the combo or something like that next turn, I believe that might be because it'd be 14 plus another 8, 12, 26. Yeah, you're right. That yeah, would it would be lethal. Yeah, so he does kind of... He is compelled more to put down a top this turn. Yeah, so the Sludge yeah. are going down just to buy yourself some time. Turn 6, Surrender has a much better play or much better collection of plays. Okay, a swipe coming down. Uh, not the most inspiring. So do you use one of your silences here, or do you just play... No, I think you just play uh, Thorazin, and then I actually wonder if you integrate your hero power just to clear that such Belcher. Pretty tempting. Uh, yeah. Because well, you don't. Oh, yeah. God. Because. Yeah, I kind of like that. Hmm. He's taking, I mean. Once you hear a power and get that extra armor, you take essentially one damage from yeah. running into that Sludge Belcher. And the Innervate, yeah, I mean, you can do some really crazy things with it later, but I think using it now is better because that also yeah. almost guarantees that your Thorson lives for two turns. Yeah. But if you leave it now, yeah, there you go. Hero power that, clear it, and your Thorson will do a lot more work for you, potentially. Ideally, yeah. We'll see. Surrender's got a, a way to clear it. Yeah, we can take, uh, can actually take two dark bombs to do that, but yeah. he set himself up for some nice mortal coil targets here. Yeah, he did set himself up uh, for mortal coil, but I think the other uh, thing that Transom was wondering is if there's a hellfire or something like that, right. uh, they would have died anyway. Uh, so just trying to leave as many minions alive on board as possible. But that is double wow. mortal coil, so that actually works out really well for Surrender. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that's not what Transit was expecting from that one. And that's could, a little rough. He could double Dark Bomb, too. He could, I think yeah, you he do. Will. I think you have to. Yeah, getting Tharazan off the board is just too much of a priority here. Yeah, and since you got the double mortar coil, then you got something back. The board is completely empty. doesn't feel too bad. It is just going to be a quick... Ancient of Lore here for Transit, though. Yep. And, all right, another Ancient of Lore. Uh, not too bad. There's a Mountain Giant now. Or Molten Giant, rather. And Ragnaros. And I would imagine we're going to see another Sludge Belcher this turn. Maybe, maybe Lothab. Nah, combo would kill you. It'd so be pretty close, though. 21. It would be, yeah, 21. Well, actually... Because, oh no, you know, you don't Even with hero power, it would be enough, Yeah, with yeah. coin, yeah, you can't hero power, so. He's trying to figure out if there was anything else he could have played, but. I mean, if he was really worried about the combo, it's low that, but I think you saved that, you know? So I think just getting a couple taunts down here, just trying to keep the board a little bit smaller isn't, uh, but isn't a bad idea. But both dark bombs, I actually don't know if the Sludge Crusher really accomplishes much other than simply buying time. Like, you have no yeah. guaranteed way to kill the Asian Lord the turn after. 
right? Before it made a lot of sense because if it if it ran into the uh, Sludge Buncher, you would have traded with it for the Dark Bomb. But uh, yeah, because of that, I'm actually in favor of this play right here where uh, you're kind of forcing a 1-1 trade here for Transit. He'll probably just go to face and play Dr. Boom though. I yeah, think, right? if I was Transit, that's what I would do. You could even hmm. do something like uh, Druid of the Claw, Shade of Naxxramas, but then okay. you'd just be really vulnerable to Shadow Flame. Very true. Yeah. I think if you play Dr. Boom, though, you're pretty pretty safe against Shadow Flame because if you Shadow Flame Slotheb, then both bombs come in. and Yeah, that's going to make... Oh, well, that would make a cheaper mount, a Molten Giant, though. Yeah, but probably not nearly enough to get a Taunt Down 2 unless it goes forward to face again, like we saw in match number one. Well, if you attack for five, or rather well, transit attacks huh. for five to get him lower, and then you get hit by the bombs. That's kind of... Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. I wonder if transit actually maybe just charges with the Druid of Claw and then puts the shade down to put down more pressure, but he's going to go with the Dr. Boo. Surrender, smiling, he's like, oh boy. Okay. And he's just going to clear it too. Stay yeah. safe, yeah. That's fine, I like that. I like it a lot. He's like, go ahead. EGH me, I dare you. Yeah, Surrender really wondering what to do here. I mean, that. I wonder what he's got. What, I really wonder if Surrender's actually debating putting the rag down. But I would hope not. I think he's looking for that would some be, way to clear with the Shadow Flame. That would be so risky. You'd have a 20% chance of hitting what you want to hit, and a 75% chance of putting yourself in a position to die really easily. So I don't think you want that. But how do you prevent this? I mean, okay, so you have a Sledge Belcher. Uh, and then... Hmm, I mean, a Twilight Break with a... Twilight Drake, rather, with a Taunt. Oh, wow, he's actually just gonna go for it. Okay, let's see where it hits. 25% chance to hit Dr. Boom. And it goes to face. All right, right. Well, well... Not the worst. Sure? The worst would have been a Boom Bot, right? So not the worst. Yeah. Um, now, I think for Surrender here, I mean, in any case, anytime you play a rag with something on board is usually a gamble, but uh, the Twilight Drake he didn't want to play because we haven't seen any silences from Transit yet. Uh, and then the Sludge Belcher would have been the only other real option there, and I think he was thinking it's still, again, the same issue as, like, a turn or two before where it's like, all right, well, whatever, you know, I can't, it doesn't do me any good other than buy me one more draw, really. I was wondering if you just maybe play Sylvanas this turn, leave rag alone. Huh. I think Transit, oh, maybe, yeah, that might not have been bad. I think Transit just trying to find a way to securely clear this zone. He's going to be able to with Swipe or yeah. even Keeper of the Grove, but obviously you kind of really want that for Taunts. Yeah, you definitely want that for Taunts. You can, uh, you can Swipe a Nation of Lore here, so he's going to draw. And, okay. So, oh, okay, so he, since, he, yeah, since he got a second Keeper of the Grove, he might as well just Keeper it and attack face. Is he going to attack? I would imagine you do, yeah. Oh, wow. No, he's you saving don't. Okay. It. okay. He's huh. really going for a big combo now. That seems kind of risky because if you lose Dr. Boom, you know, if, if there's like a giant Shadow Flame or something yeah. like that, then you're so far away from using the combo. Although, did we see both Mountain Giants? I... Uh, no, I don't think so, which makes me want to run into face even more, you know? Right, well, no, I, I cuz if we did see both mountain giants, there's no worry of a giant shadow flame. So that's why I'm that's why I'm actually thinking. I don't remember if we saw both giants this game. We did last game or two games ago rather against the grinder mage, but yeah, we've only seen one, I, I believe think we only saw one this time. Uh, so the risk was there, but transit either not thinking about it or not worried about it. And well, okay. he draws Savage Drawer, and he does not. All right, well, he can silence the... All right, let's see. What damage can he do? He can silence it, and then he can... Does he need to silence it, though? Well, I'm trying to figure out if he can figure out lethal here. Because you have 14, and then 10. Oh, you can't! You have lethal! Oh, a swipe. Oh, yeah, yeah you're that's, right. that's game. All right. And so Transit, yeah, should have enough. Wow. Out of nowhere. Very nice. And so that's going to force a game five. Well played by Transit. Yeah, and spotting the lethal. Yeah, one extra damage for lethal. Surrender just giving a nod there. And 
We're going to be tied up 2-2 going down to the last game in this best of five. It's going to be a Warlock mirror too. Warlock mirror match. The last mirror match was Druid versus Druid, and Surrender took that one in set number three, but now we're in set number five. A handlock mirror, this could get uh, this could get very interesting. It could, I mean, handlock mirrors definitely uh, have been a lot of kind of strategic mind games there and trying to save stuff. I mean, same with Control Warrior mirrors too, right? It's like who saves their Sylvanas for longer, who, sell, who saves their Big Game Hunters for longer. And I believe both of these guys are going handlock with no Jura Axis running Ragnaros. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So things get really interesting here, depending on the uh, the plays that each player makes and what they try to force out of each other. I mean, in any game, it's really about forcing mistakes, but when it's the mirror, it really comes down to forcing the other player's hands. And both players are ready, as there's no other deck choices to be made. Let's jump right into set number five. go. The final game of the night. Surrender versus Transit. Handlock versus Handlock. The last mirror went in the favor of Surrender. The Druid versus Druid. And this one. We'll see where it goes, but the hand looks pretty good early on for Surrender. Having that Mountain Giant is just a great start. And, and the BGH. Yeah. Wow, Surrender really hitting the good hands in the mirrors today. Yeah. Uh, the more coin Owl, not too bad for Transit, for that Twilight Drake, should it come out? But True, but a much more versatile and powerful hand for Surrender. Absolutely. Unless the Mulligan brings in something for Transit. Wow, well that's a really not so bad hand for Surrender here. It's really good. Okay, off. Twilight Drake. Oh, okay. Right. But, uh, yeah, no silence in hand for uh, yeah. Surrender, so he'd, he'd have to uh, use his giant to battle it. Uh, Surrender also taking the coin again this time around, so he does have that advantage. Yeah. It's pretty big too. So, a little bit of life tapping. A lot of life being tapped as we move into the early parts of the game. Those Warlocks, man. So, no coin Twilight Drake for Surrender unless he draws it right now. And he didn't. Uh, do you want to play that Ancient Watcher, though? Yeah, I, w I wonder. I, I actually think maybe you do. You don't really lose too much from it. Uh, you can try to threaten that maybe you'll silence and start the damage first to apply sure. pressure. Uh, I think putting it down creates more factors for Transit to consider. Uh, so I think it makes the game a little bit more complicated for Transit if you put it down. Yeah, I don't think you need to, but I kind of like it. I was just to get it out there. Yeah, I, I would just put it out. No, nope, just gonna hold on to it. Just gonna hold on to it. Now, transit. Uh, most likely, we'll just put down the Twilight Drake, but really taking other things into consideration here. I mean, you have to when it's a mirror matchup. Yep, I think so. So a 4-9 Twilight Drake, and oh boy. Well, there is wow. the silence for Surrender. So now he's torn. He's like, shoot, do I put down the Mountain Giant, or should I? do I get the easy Owl Mortal Coil here? If I'm Surrender, I put the Giant down. Yeah, I mean, you've been waiting for this. The Giant is still on paper, you know, better than the Twilight Drake. Yeah. Transit does have a way to trade with it, though. You can use a Dark Bomb and then Mortal Coil to finish it off after running into it with the Twilight Drake. Yeah, I mean, you definitely have some options. Yeah. Hmm. Now he, oh yeah, he also has that Mind Bolt we looked at earlier. Uh, didn't draw that yet, though. Shadow Bolt? Yeah. Oh, Shadow Bolt, rather. Uh, but yeah, that's actually going to matter quite a bit in the mirror matchup. It can help get rid of those Giants later on. Now, let's see. I suppose you could play Lothep here too, because then they wouldn't be able to, you know, use spells to remove things quite as easily. But True. It's nice to just get rid of the giant, and he, you know, he keeps his Twilight Drake up. Yeah. Uh, most likely we'll get more to by Surrender also, but he knows that. But it's worth the chance. Yeah, it's just fine. And then, oh, he's just gonna life tap too. 
bringing out more options for themselves. Right. Uh, the Ancient Watchers do have a lot of versatility later on with Defender of Argus or even Silence to win uh, if need be. So both players choosing to save those. And oh. Mortal Coil. Could coin into that Sludge Belcher. Yeah. Well, he's going to have to play something. Or he could save the coin and coin into Dr. Boom next turn, which would be pretty strong, too. Yeah, so that would mean he wants to put the Ancient Watcher down. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, I think maybe that's the play here. Putting another Sludge Belcher, I don't think, is too emergent right now. You're ahead in health. They don't have a minion on board. Uh, the Sludge Belcher, it's only three damage that you're doing. So, not the most pressing matter. So I think, yeah, just the Ancient Watcher. And saving that coin for either the Boom or the Ragnaros is going to be the way to go here for Surrender. Oh, another Twilight, Twilight Drake, at least. Okay, and a Sunfury Protector. St yeah. Silence still hasn't come out from Surrender either, though. So Transit uh, would be a little concerned about just watching that up. So he's just going to go with the Ancient Watcher. Yeah, can always choose what you taught later on. Uh, let's see. So will he coin out Dr. Boom this turn? It's a little bit less strong with what's on the board, but... It's so much board presence to get out so early on that you can see he's already grabbed that coin. And, yeah. Looks like that will be the play. Yep. Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom. <laughs> Dr. Boom. There he is. <laughs> All right. There's a little cackle. Oh, uh, shadow there's bolt. a shadow bolt. Okay. So that can deal with Dr. Boom. Yeah. Quite nicely, actually. He's got you have, Shadow, you have Shadow Flame, Flame too. Watcher yeah. too. Right. Huh. And then, if you did that, and then you, you don't really have a face. Uh, yeah. If you did that, you could also just Hellfire, and then Shadow uh, Shadow Bolt the Doctor oh, Boom okay. as well too. The question with all of that is, you know, where are the bombs going to go? I kind of like the. Uh, I, I want to say that I kind of like the Shadow Flame on the Ancient Watcher just because it does less damage to your Twilight Drake and makes it so that it would survive the Boombots even if both did four to it. But if you Hellfire, the Ancient Watcher could still go one of the Boombots. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, so I. That's true too. I was originally you, thinking the same thing as you did, but. If you lose the Twilight Drake though. Okay, it's going to use Hellfire. All I right. suppose now is a better time to do that than later. Okay, well, all right, well, one goes to face, two oh, goes to face, five face. damage. Yikes. All right, well, it hurts a little bit. He does have an anti kill bomb, but no Molten Giants in hand for transit, so it doesn't feel too good, but he has a 4-7 Twilight Drake still on board. Yeah, that's really nice. And so he's got some really good taunting options coming up. Let's see what Surrender has. Can't play that Ragnaros just yet. No, not on turn seven. So yeah. what's he got here? I mean... He's got his own Hellfire and the Shadow Flame. Shadow Flame doesn't help too much, it looks like. You can silence your Ancient Watcher and then Hellfire to clear the board. Now, that would clear the entire board, though. But it would also bring Transit down to 13 health. Yeah. That would make Molten Giants a little bit too accessible, I think, for a Surrender right now. Yeah, yeah so just, just going to light All right. Not, just not a very inspiring hand. I think Sludge Belcher is the way to go. Yeah, I think that's completely fine also. Uh, okay. Soul. No no need to really rush for that just yet. Mm. Now, Transit, I mean, it's very tempting to put down your oh, Dodger Boom here for sure. Yeah. But so you're probably not going to die to anything. I mean, if you sense the answered watcher, that's seven coming in. That would take you down to nine. So there's a little bit of danger, but not a whole lot. Let's see. What else is? What else would be a better, like, ideal play here for transit? Uh, just it's awkward with eight mana because so much costs five. You don't really have yeah. any cost stuff to go with it. You could put down your own sludge voucher, but I think the Doctor Boo is a better pressure play here for transit. Yeah. All right. And surrender does have a BGH in hand now. Obviously, so many BGH targets in this mirror. 
So does he want to use some other method to get rid of this? Which he doesn't have too many options actually, because he can't shadow flame his giant because he can't play it. He could shadow flame his ancient watchers, see where things end up, and then if he's lucky, he still has that sludge belcher. He can clear the twilight drink. Well, he could just hit first at that. On that oh, that's true too. Point. Yeah, I know it's surviving. It can still soak up a boo bot for you. Yeah. Um, and then, but then what are you left with? Four mana. Uh, Huh. Hmm. I think you're going to need to deal with those boom bots at some point, you know, so why yeah, not you now? Know, I, I do like hitting the Drake with the You could also put down the Slusher. You could also put down the Swamp Boost too to try to soak another boom bot. True, but then you can't put down the BGH. True. Oh man, oh, is he gonna silence his? Oh, okay. That was less inspiring than I thought it might be, but. And, oh, the owl's gonna soak up one bomb. Oh wow, okay, that works out. Very, very well. Alright, and the swamp boost for just, you know, some presence of on the board. Okay, there's a Molten Giant for Transit. He can play for six mana. He can taunt it up. You just saw an owl come down. It's not such a bad time. True. Could also go uh, Lotheb and taunt that up as well. Could. Or, uh, you you know, may not even need to taunt it up. You put the Lotheb down, to be fair. You could also just heal bot. Oh, do or, you really uh, want to, heal though, with the Molten Giant there? You're so close to being able to play it for such a big play. You know you're going to take more damage anyway, though. And being able to Lotheb and uh, Sludge Belcher on the same turn is nice. Although Lotheb heal bot is nice, too. Well, yeah, so this turn, I think, with with your 9 mana, I think just... Huh. So maybe you can life tap, see what you get, and then loathe them and taunt if you feel threatened. Uh, but then you can't taunt if you're Molten Giant, so... Maybe even just life tap and then... Oh, okay, wow. wow. Nice. Because it's like, oh shoot, that's not... <laughs> Well, it's nice to have another giant. I mean, it's but he nice, but uh, it makes it really tough for him to decide. Yeah. I think I think maybe just Sludge Belcher. To be honest. Yeah, you want to save that Taunt Giver. I guess he's not really in much danger of dying. Okay. Well, he, all right. He's gonna put down the mountain and then a Taunt a Taunt Giver to see where things go. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know if that was the time to give up your Taunt Giver. Well. You know, Transit should be able to draw into more too at this rate, of, at this point in the game. Should be, but he might not. <laughs> he might not. That is true. Because he could have potentially played both Giants on the Taunt Giver yes. next turn, you know? And still had Taunt on the board for this turn. Alright, there is a BGH coming down. Yep. Now he's going to have to Shadow Flame, I think. Shadow Flame that Giant. That doesn't feel too good, though. No. Huh. Does he do that one more damage? That's it, the it's, a, it's a tough question, really. It is, because you don't know if your opponent has more taunt givers uh, or if they have those molten giants to use them with. Now, if he does hit, though, He's on track for lethal next turn in multiple ways. Yep. Actually, even if he doesn't hit, so Should I would be, not right? hit. Yeah, not hitting. I think is the other way to go. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. You can put down your mountain giant and slush belcher. Buy yourself a turn that will hopefully clear the uh, BGH. You can do one extra damage to the Twilight Drake with the Sludge that comes out, and then Shadow Flame with the Molten Giant. Yeah, could also do. Uh, could also do. Yeah, Mountain Giant Sludge Belt is probably the best. You know what else you, you can do? Really you can silence the Drake time. and Shadow Flame your Owl. Huh. Yeah, actually. And then, and then you can actually, put down a Molten Giant. Actually, I really like that. And then you can put down a Molten Giant. That's actually. Oh wow, that's actually, I really like that play. Uh, you know what, now I, I kind of started as a joke, but I think that's the way to go. He still may do that. Yeah, it looks like he's still All right. to. 
the order didn't really matter, but yeah, yeah. that's very, very nice. All right, well, surrender. Is this a rag turn? Might be. I mean, you only need one damage if you Hellfire after that. Because he can't, he can't Molten and Shadow Flame, right? This might be a Sludge Belcher anti healbot turn, too. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe he just delays his Molten's by a lot just to buy himself more time. Yeah, because he's still got that Defender of Argus, so he's got he's got some room to work with. So so playing the rag here is literally like it determines either like who wins really in so many different ways. Because mm. all right, because if it doesn't hit the Molten Giant, if it hits face, Transit can still just Simon Soul it and anti kill bot or like you know either or is really right. what I mean. Um, I think you're. Oh boy. Oh, he's thinking about it. Is he going to go for it? I've got a feeling he is. I got a feeling he is too, but the transit will just be able to put down a Molten and Siphon Soul that. And if it doesn't hit the Molten Giant on board, Surrender may as well have surrendered the game himself. Now, the big thing to keep in mind is that I believe this is the game that we've seen a lot of tonight, but this is a game that Surrender double Dark Bomb, didn't he? Yes. Against Thorazin. So that means there's no direct damage you can draw from hand unless he's running Wait, a second no, Hellfire. Wait, no, no, that, that would be... Was that last game? I believe that's actually the last game. It might have been last game, yeah. Oh, shoot, now I'm blanking on it. I know, it's been... Yo, that is the it's last like, game. It's like, it's midnight here, we've watched a lot of games. All right, but here comes Ragnaros. And where does is it, it going to go? Does it the giant? It does not. Oh, man. Does not Surrender knows that that's not what he wanted. There's a BGH, too, but... Oh, shoot. Wait, that means he can BGH and then anti heal Yeah, bot. dude, he can BGH heal bot. I think that would be very preferable to... And then he can to, still uh, put down the Molten Giant. Right. Yep. Yeah, he put the Molten Giant down first. Of yeah, for sure. Uh, BGH. And he could just trade, wow, actually, and yeah, save the BGH. Trade, I like yeah. that better. Yeah. I do like that better. I think that's much safer, because another giant might come down and maybe it's Shadow Flames, you know? Yeah, well, there is more in there. Or like two giants is what I meant with the molten giants coming down possibly. Yeah. So there is for Thorazin. And with the Lothab, that act that actually denies uh, any possible lethal from Surrender. So Transit really going for the safer play here. Mm -hmm. Transit's oh, played this series very well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's been so calm throughout it too. I mean, yeah. look, he just got his arms back. Chewing Surrender, gum. man. I, he needs the anti heal bot, but even then, what does that get him? If he puts down the load, the anti heal bot, how. He goes up to 23, there's 16 damage, so. Yeah, it would kind of delay the inevitable. And not to mention, there's so much burst, you just might never get a Molten Giant Defender of Argus turn if you. Yeah. <laughs> It's a pretty rough situation. Transit still has a Hellfire in there. Yeah, Trans Transit has a couple ways to finish this game, even if something, or even if Surrender heals up. Surrender, wait till the last minute. Load that. Load them and the heal bot. Okay. Yep. Alright, so 23. 16 damage on board. So seven more damage is what he needed. I mean, putting down a uh, Putting down Sludge Belcher really kind of puts you in a fantastic place because they yeah. can't really attack through it. And then uh, you probably and then just. Do you clear? Do you trade and then just hit? Face. Trade and keep the giant? Yeah. This actually has made it a little bit. Huh. It is interesting. You could also just clear and put down your mountain giant. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of 12 damage burst from hand to worry about. Yeah. I don't think. Uh, wow, okay, he's Ooh. done that So he's definitely clearing it. Yeah. The only question is, will it be the Mountain Giant or will it be the Slug Belcher? And it looks like it's going to be the Slug Belcher. Yeah, okay. He's going hit for face, right? No, he's not going to, all right? He's not. Yeah, he, he, so at this point, he really wants to try to burst down, I think, as much as he can to avoid the Molten Giants coming down for a Shadow Flame. Yeah, 
Uh, I, I'm okay with that, actually, because this Mountain Giant costs so much at this point. Uh, the Sludge Belcher should buy you enough time to put down your Mountain Giant for another turn. And then try to make uh, a play happen here. Yeah, that's true. If he would have attacked with the Molten Giant, it would have been enough mana to do yeah. Molten Giant Shadow Flame. Yeah. And, and Transit has his Rag coming up too, so he can really set up for a 24 damage lethal here. He's got plenty of stuff in his hand though too. So even if that were to happen, it wouldn't be the end of the world necessarily. It wouldn't, but he'd, he'd lose out on a lot of his win condition too though. Right? Whereas Surrender would have another Molten Giant coming, I believe. As things are right now, do you just go ahead and play Emperor Tharzan? Yeah, I guess so. Now, if you're transit, do you siphon soul that because you have a BGH? Uh, yeah, because you can't BGH it. Oh man, but if you siphon soul, you don't have a play. Yeah. Maybe you can just silence it. Maybe you uh, can just silence the Tharsen and ki uh, kill the defender. You, you give him such an easy clear for his Sludge Belcher, though. Because, I mean, again, like, are you going to take uh. 10 damage from their hand, or I guess 8 damage from the hand if they silence your Sludge Belcher? Oh, man. Wow, it draws into a Defender of Argus. Okay, well, that's that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, hmm. Only six cards left. Oh man, I mean, Transit, I think he's playing around the, the Shadow Flame a lot, but I think it's going to have to happen at some point. He needs to watch out for the Hellfire, too. But this he's Thorson... Getting, he's getting so low. Like, Hellfire is a real problem. But this Thorson will do a lot of work for him if it, if it survives. In fact, he's not even going to silence. He's just going to clear it. Okay, so that's a really solid Hellfire turn for a Surrender. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, but the Thorson still lives afterwards. Okay, wow, so six damage for Surrender, so close. Oh man, that's really nerve-wracking. And there's still that Siphon Soul in the hand of Transit too. Wait, he's he straight, oh, oh no the dark box. way! I knew it. No way. Yep, it's too much direct damage, should not a life tap. Well, that's that, oh, Surrender. Man. Able to take it with the three, two. And uh, Transit may have played a little bit too carefully at the end. Ah, uh, well, you know, still give up a hand for both of these guys. I mean, Transit yeah. had some really good plays in, in the whole series, too, himself. But Surrender pulls through, gets that Dark Bomb at the end. The double Dark Bomb Hellfire against eight health left on his opponent. Really yeah. well played. I mean, Transit. Well, light. Transit, yet another tournament qualifying, yet another tournament going out in the first round. But a much harder opponent this time, and not because of any kind of silly mistakes that he made. He doesn't look as defeated as the other times we've seen him, because this time I think I think he should be fairly proud of his play. I mean, obviously the life tap's gonna haunt him a little bit, but it's not like last season where he made some really just blatant mistakes, right? Just sure. complete, like, misplays, not preferable choices uh, that he could have made differently. So we'll have a quick interview with Surrender before we wrap things up here today at Hearthstone Manages Korea. And it's been a year since we've seen Surrender because he did play in uh, the early season of Korea versus China. And, and Surrender just saying, yeah, you know, I, I know like our teammates kind of tease him like, oh, you're not a strong player and whatnot. We used to do that. But uh, to be very fair, as you guys saw today, he's a, he is a really good player. He has so much potential and he's such a skilled player. So it was a tough match, I'll admit it. It was very tough. And, and it's been about three, four days since uh, I moved into the team house for the Kuala Killers. But ever since I moved in, uh, I don't think I ever got more than five hours of sleep. That's just how much we've been practicing for this tournament, for this league. And yeah, a lot of people kind of, you know, tease me and make fun of me about how much I talk and how animated I am when I play. Uh, but you know that's that's what works for me. Just talking it out loud, uh, all my plays, and also you know just keeping calculations and whatnot. 
And what about the Major Dome Grinder deck? And so I've never played. I've never played against that, and um, but I, I've known of the deck's existence, and obviously because when we used to be uh, in the same team, I I know that uh, some people were practicing Grinder Mage, but I actually wasn't expecting the Major Domo Grinder to come out. I was just expecting some other version of Major Domo, or some other version of Grinder, and uh, so I think I was caught a little bit off guard there. And just talking about the quarterfinals, he will uh, he will be in the same group as Socio. Just saying, oh, you know, Excited. Pretty, pretty confident. Uh, as always, uh, as I am, to play against Socio, I'm pretty excited that I might get a chance to do that. Now, for Socio, you know, I've known him for so long. And I really respect him a lot. So, you know, he's one of those players that if I'm not going to be able to make it up, I'd be completely fine as long as he's able to continue going in the tournament. That's why last season I helped him so much prepare all the way through the finals. But, you know, this season, I mean, he won last season. So I think this season it's my turn. So he can maybe take a step back in the quarterfinals. <laughs> All right, well, we are now waiting for the uh, special giveaway event, of course. Uh, oh, hooray. At the end of the broadcast. Yep. The McGurgler is ready with Dawn, and Surrender will be joining them. And congratulations to both Dawn and Surrender. Uh, Surrender versus Trans, they really lived up to the expectations I had for that match. Yeah, it was a good match. Uh, a lot of really close games. And in the end, uh, in the end uh, Surrender finally making it through the qualifiers. And, and Trans and took that one risk through. that he hadn't been all game in that last mirror matchup, and then... It, it bit him yeah. at the end, but what can you say? I think uh, can you say a little bit too conservatively there. Oh, yeah. well. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like a blatant mistake or a misplay. Um, really, just you know, maybe not the most preferable in, in two choices. But at the same time, sure, you can say, well, even if he didn't draw it, there was a high chance he had all three of those cards in his hand because his hand was so big. But we know that if Surrender hadn't drawn that, the game could have gone longer. So. I mean, can't really blame Transit, I think, but Transit, it's going to haunt Transit for sure, though. I know that. All right, so. Mergurgler explaining the rules for the giveaway, which is for a uh, live audience here and some uh, three viewers who watch from home in Korea. Mm -hmm. And they will open packs to just see who gets some pretty cool cards to give more packs away to the Korean viewers. I wonder if like Blizzard Korea people, Blizzard Korea people like in the office are watching this. They're like, I hope they get really bad packs, so we don't <laughs> give away free packs. <laughs> well, they're they're virtual packs, so they're not actually giving away physical goods. So it's That's probably true. okay with them. That's true. Yeah. In fact, it's probably better. I was probably happy to give away it's more packs easy. as long as it's done through you, a formal event. To, you know, if you have to give something away, it's best to give away something that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> And, and it obviously it will help increase the pop, uh, the population of the Hearthstone community, and yeah. also just more you know more activity from the players or from the users who are here. So I'm sure everyone's pretty happy about this event. And what what are we gonna see? Surrender. Whoa, two oh. go. Whoa, it's pretty good. Yeah, two golden rares and an epic. I believe he already just added 30 extra packs right there to six people total. Not bad. Kinda... And then a just a boring pack right there. We got pretty much all of it one. Yeah, really. Whoa, okay, neither of gold. Neither are golden. So three cards that will add extra packs to six lucky people today. Where right. we're going next. Is today finally her time to shine? I don't know, we'll see. It's been a few seasons. <laughs> the last season did not oh go well. Oh boy. It's not looking too good. I think it's cause she shakes it around, man. Be efficient, just do it. Oh, she got a golden common. I believe that still counts because it's golden. Does it? I believe so. So she got something. All right. uh, nope. You know, the fan fans don't even expect much from her pack openings these days. Nope, they've been conditioned. Yeah. Conditioned for disappointment. Dawn, though.
What's he got? Star formation. Pack opening method. D didn't really deal much good though. Nope. Keep hot. Still a star. Just, yeah, just starts at a different point. Don loves his stars. Savoring every uh, second of it. Oh, well, he got a golden combo. All right. All right, so everyone got at least something, but Surrender definitely buying the hearts of the fans today for those extra packs. Yep, I would say so. Yeah, so not bad. six people will get 60 extra packs today. That's a lot of cards. Yeah, it is. 300 cards to open and possibly disenchant and maybe build a grinder mage, major domo grinder mage. <laughs> maybe. Just, just saying, man. Although you would need to go through Black Rock Mountain to do that too. So. And if you do want to work your way up the ladder, hand like might be a better way to go. I don't know, Although man. That's an expensive one, though. Go Patron Warrior. Just go all okay, in. Okay, yeah, that's, you know? that's not it's that expensive cheap either. Deck. Yeah. It teaches you a lot about the game. So today's results, Don taking it in the reverse sweep over Ghost 3 2. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit, bit of a shaky here. game, yeah, but and then, and on the uh, flip side, this was a fun match. Surrender versus Transit, taking 1-1 one, one each, going back and forth until the last mirror. Warlock versus Warlock, Surrender taking that with that double dark bomb hellfire on yep. the last turn. That's one thing, you can never underestimate the direct damage coming from a handlock. So we have game. our first group for the quarterfinal set. It's gonna be Socio, Miracle of Dawn, and Surrender right there. Now tomorrow, I'm sure we'll see, or not tomorrow, next, next week, week we'll see. We'll see the matchup summary for next week here, but we do have four more round of 16. There it is, Jun versus Rini Hour and Jangon versus Kajinki. I'm looking forward to the return of Rini Hour. Definitely one of the best players in Korea. Went to BlizzCon last year. We'll see if he can make it back again, but certainly a talented guy. And then next Tuesday, Coco versus Esperanza. <laughs> and then uh, Taesong versus Palmblad. Palmblad, of course, back again, our uh, runner up from last season. Yeah. Uh, he is part of the cool Oculars. He yep. also played pretty well uh, during the special match too. But of course, yeah, the special bad. match was all about Flurry and Luxam, who actually yeah. didn't qualify back in to season two, but they are helping train in the cool Oculars. So that's pretty exciting to hear, mm -hmm. uh, having that team house here in Korea, first professional Hearthstone team. Uh, so that's it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week on Monday, same time, uh, late night here in Korea, and. You know, do your time zone conversions. Uh, of course, we will let you guys know a couple hours ahead of time on social media and whatnot, so you'll be able to catch the matches. Uh, but season two looks to be pretty good. Yeah, good start so far. We'll see you guys next week.